if you know that God has called you to be in a certain place, mm. no matter what happened, no matter people who don't think you're capable or good enough, you know that God's called you to that place, so you know you're going to win no matter what. Good morning, everyone, you guys. It is Monday, um, April 15th, and I am about to, it's I'm about to start work, so I need to make me like a small glass of iced coffee real quick. I boiled some eggs for breakfast, but I'm probably not gonna eat them until let me see, it's 8:48. I probably won't eat them until 10:15, but I'm gonna make me like a small glass of iced coffee. And then I'm gonna log in for work. And then I wanna get into my Bible, you guys. I'm so excited about my Bible and to share what kind of Bible I got, you guys. I'm about to get into this iced coffee real quick. I don't know if you guys remember, this is from like a couple of vlogs ago, but my husband bought me this fragrance. It smells so good. It's summertime, it's warm out, and this scent is tea and lemongrass um but it's mola m-o-l-l-a 1899 but it smells so good it smells so refreshing i just put some of that on and it smells so good so yes i'm gonna make me like a really small glass of coffee just because it's monday and i need me like a little monday <laughs> monday treat to get me going but yeah, this is gonna be very quick because I need to go upstairs. I have 10 minutes to be signed on to my computer. I need to log in to my computer. This Bible, I'm so excited about this Bible, you guys. That, um, I'm gonna just like jump right in. So you guys know for years, this has been like my everyday bible i've been highlighting in it um adding notes to it journaling through it um but i actually use a separate journal to write my notes but um i really wanted to focus on application i think that's so important not to say that I don't, but I need to hurry up and log into this computer. But not to say that I don't focus on application, I do. But I really want application to be my primary focus because I've spent years reading. <clears throat> I've spent years reading and studying my Bible and just gaining so much knowledge from it. And I don't want to be a person that's like full of knowledge, but um, doesn't actually like live out the word of God. I really want to focus on living out the word of God. And I would say I do um, to a certain extent, like I'm a human being. So of course I'm sinful by nature um, and I don't live in sin. I feel like I'm morally correct, but that's still, that's like basic. Well, it's it's a beautiful thing. It's a blessing, of course, um, because there are people who are out there who, you know, claim to walk with God and, but their life doesn't show the fruit of it. So I wanna be a, you know, person that like literally bears fruit, like a fruitful person. Like you, um, I guess what I'm trying to say, you guys, <laughs> because I'm like, as I'm speaking, I'm thinking about it and I'm like, well, I do bear fruit, but 
I think it's just for me wanting to reach another level spiritually. Like, as far as applying the words. Like, there's areas in my life where I can say that I don't apply the word. Um, there's areas in my life that I struggle with. And I've talked about that on my last video. Um, one of the things that I've dealt with is offense. God is working with me on that. And it's not something that I deal with like on a daily basis. Like I'm not pondering on offense daily. I would say it comes up more so when I possibly like see a person that has offended me. And of course I told you guys like they don't exist. And I just know that God, and yeah, I, I know that God wants me to deal with those situations better and it's after nine o'clock let me get logged in yeah so i have to take calls you guys for work i'm so i have my headphones on but another thing that i deal with is sometimes i experience anxiety and the bible tells us be anxious for nothing um and so a lot of times i just need to just take my focus off of the problem and just keep my mind and my heart focused on God and trust him in every single area of my life not just the easy parts but also trusting him with those difficult situations um, and not feel like I have to control or have control over every situation and area of my life application is important and also yeah just whatever whatever area the holy spirit is leading in my life to apply the word of god like i said my goal is to go to the next level spiritually and um and obedience is a very important part of our walk with god because he's our father um, and the Bible tells us that obedience is better than sacrifice. Like, obedience is God's love language. I want to love the Lord in a way that he desires to be loved, not in a way that I desire to love him. Because how would you feel if your spouse or significant other only loved you the way that they desire to be loved and then miss loving you the way that you desire to be loved then you won't feel loved that's what i have taken on um in my marriage and also with my relationship with god first sip so good so here's my attributes of god study by daily grace co this is my it is well study it's um by Daily Grace Co. as well, and it is walking away from anxiety and into God's word. So I think I'm gonna dig into these two for this next hour or so, probably a little longer. And I do have emotions of the heart. I may get to this one, probably. Um, it just depends, but definitely gonna revisit this um today because i feel like that will be like much needed and i have a whole video on my prayer um notebook where i write my prayer points so i'm definitely going to open this up and I actually think I want to talk a little bit more about this a little later on today with you guys because this is like very helpful um, but I'm gonna share a little bit more about this with you guys later but it's just um, a notebook and it's my prayer points what I pray what I pray during certain times of the day so we'll talk about that later but I am about to do that and you guys my life application study bible i'm so excited about this bible i've been um i did unbox it for you guys at the beginning of the video and then that was like two days ago yeah i was just feeling like so good reading it this weekend um and just reading like the notes 
and just like how to apply the scripture of course like reading the notes is good on how to apply the scripture but even consulting with the holy spirit is even better when it when it we're talking about how to apply the scripture because God will give you instruction. Like the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart um, on how to apply the scripture. But yeah, so I'm about to do this study and then I'm going to check with you guys in a little bit. Um, it is 1022 and I was, I'm reading my, um, attributes of God study and today's study is on the attribute of God omnipotent and omnipotent means that it's a character or attribute of God it just means that he's all powerful um, and I have a list of verses that I have to go through so I've been reading that uh, in between my work calls and I'm also praying from my prayer points. But yes, like with the attribute study, we're focusing on God's uh, being on God being omnipotent and meaning he's all powerful. And I was just reading Psalms 33 verses 8 and 9. Um, and then Psalms 33 says that verse 8 says, let the whole world fear the Lord and let everyone stand in awe of him whenever i come across a verse that talks about the fear of the lord i actually have notes on what it means to fear god so i love to pull those notes out and i have a page where i talk about the fear of the lord so whenever i come across something that mentions the fear of the lord i like to go back and read this because i just want to just meditate on what that means and just remind myself what it means to really fear god i feel like when i remind myself of these things i'm actually meditating on the word which in turn because i'm meditating on it is planting a seed in me in my heart the seed of the word and when i run into situations the word is brought to remembrance and then i can apply it um because like i said we're really focused on obedience application to the word of god this is actually talking about proverbs and uh proverbs verse one and seven which says the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise discipline so with me having knowledge true knowledge is fear of the lord and i have a note that says uh, true knowledge and wisdom flow from fearing the Lord and fearing the Lord means to reverence him in Psalms 33 and 8 it says, it says the whole world let the whole world fear the Lord and let everyone stand in awe of him having fear of God is not like a a scared type fear but it's more of a reverence for him a respect for him so because I fear him because I reverence him I don't do things that the world does or I don't act the way the the world does. I'm set apart. I'm consecrated unto the Lord. That's what the fear of the Lord is. And it's having a deep respect for God. Like I, you know, we can say like I have so much respect for God that I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to treat this person this way or I'm not going to indulge in this because I fear God because I have a respect for God and I know this isn't right. So that's kind of, that's what the fear of the Lord is. Um, I have a note that the reason the, um, that fearing God is the beginning of both knowledge and wisdom is that a moral life begins with reverence and humility. Respect him and live life his way, not our own way, because he is creator and sustainer of the universe. And that all ties into recognizing like that God is all powerful. He's all powerful. He's sovereign. And because I know this about him, I don't have to fear anything as far as like, you know, what's going on my in my life. But I could just trust him or I don't have to fear people or fear situations. But because I know who my God is, I know that he is all powerful. I know that uh, because I fear him, because I reverence him and I know who he is, I know that he's going to come through. I know that everything is going to work out for my good 
because the Bible says that God works all things out for those that love him, those that fear him. So, yeah, um, I love, that's why I love taking my notes because I can always go back to them and refer them, especially because these things come up in other areas of the Bible. Like I, I studied Proverbs where it talks about the fear of the Lord, but then here we are in Psalms and it's talking about the fear of the Lord. And then I have other reference um, scriptures, verses that talk about the fear of the Lord. It was a verse in like the book of Acts that I really loved and it talks about the early church and how there was like this reverence for God and I pray that God increased the fear of the Lord in my life but also in the lives of others people that I'm around people I interact with even the whole entire body of Christ the church like that God will restore and increase the fear of the Lord in him and so i love this because like when we're studying the bible the holy spirit will just like drop things in our hearts to pray for right um and i need to write that down and spend some time today just like really praying for that but you know it's always like when we're reading verses and when we're reading scriptures there is a call to recognize who god is right because we're studying or i'm studying um, him being omnipotent so there's there's a call for me to recognize who he is he is omnipotent he's all-powerful and then there's a call for me there's a um, a call for me to fear the Lord so I need to go downstairs and I need to take out some garbage and I will check in with you guys you guys it's the next day um so yesterday I was talking about and telling you guys about like how I how I deal with anxiety so I don't have severe anxiety or anything like that however there are times when I do have moments and last week was just a week where it just felt like there were just so many things going wrong that kind of triggered <laughs> my anxiety and that's why I was just like prompted to pick up that study it is well study that focuses on dealing with anxiety and one of the things that I didn't get to read it last night um, I read it this morning and I love because um, I did this whole study before but it's definitely a study that I would probably often refer back to one of the things from this morning that was just like a beautiful reminder is that although fear and worry are not from God and God tells us not to fear in the aspect of being afraid and not to worry he does use those moments of anxiety those moments of worry to draw us closer to him and that's one of the things about me but when i'm like going through it <laughs> that's one of the things about me i'm not one of those people that will distance myself from god when i'm going through anything i am one of those people that like i'm gonna like draw even closer like it's gonna push me even closer to the lord i'm gonna be praying more i'm gonna be seeking god more I'm going to be crying out more. It's just one of those things that God uses to just draw me like into a, a deeper level of intimacy with him because I'm literally, I have moments where if something, and it's not that I don't trust God. It's just like, I trust God. I trust God to get me through. It's more so like in the moment while I'm going through this, this does not feel good and I don't like the way it feels. And I know like in the Bible, in James, he tells us to consider it joy when we go through trials. And I do try to remind myself of that. And then, you know, I my mind and my heart reverts back to joy. But sometimes in those moments, in those moments, it really, you know, it doesn't feel good. Sometimes going through things doesn't feel good. Yes, 
I have moments where I count it all joy and I'm thankful because it could always be worse, but it, the process does not feel good. And I'm one of those people, I am a daddy's girl. Like God, that is my father, that's my heavenly father. Like I literally live life <laughs> as a daddy's girl. And so even that, um, when you know like, okay, my heavenly father, he's the creator of the world. He can do all things. He's sovereign. He's all powerful. There's nothing impossible for him. And when you have that mindset, you get a little spoiled sometimes. And you're like, uh, God, what is happening? Why, why am I going through this? What, what's going on? But then you have to remember, like, yes, he's an all powerful God. Yes, he's a loving, compassionate God but he's still a father that disciplines his children. He's still a father that that is building character in his children. He is a father that is preparing his children. And these trials and these things that we go through is in preparation to build our character and to position us into and grow us into the women or the men that he's called us to be. And so these things are going to come because God, our father, is in the process of perfecting our faith. <laughs> so it's just those things that we have to, I was sitting on my braids, that I often have to remind myself of. Like, okay. And then that's when I snap out of it. See, th and that's the reason why it's so important to, when we're going through things, to stay connected, to stay grounded in prayer, to stay grounded in the word. It just often reminds me of David, like when he was going through it, the Bible says that David strengthened himself in the Lord. And this is what strengthening yourself in the Lord is gonna look like, being grounded in prayer, being grounded in the word, reminding yourself of the word and trusting the process trusting God that's another thing that God is doing he's building our trust and that is one of the things that if we talk in spiritual gifts like give me the gift of faith give me the gift of faith because I want to be walking around everything around me could be whatever I want to be so strong in my faith so grounded in my faith where it doesn't phase me because it's all gonna work out. It's all gonna be okay. That doesn't mean it's not gonna feel good. I mean, that doesn't mean it's gonna feel good because <laughs> it's gonna be feeling good. But yes, so this It Is Well study was very encouraging to open back up and get into. And I told you guys, I would talk to you guys about my, um, my notebook, my prayer notebook. I have a video on this, but I really, didn't go into details on exactly like where my prayer points came from but i did go through like my prayer points in that video and i will link the video but i don't know if you guys heard about the prayer watch hours so i will say like we can pray to god at any time we don't have to pray to God at certain hours of the day like we can go to our Heavenly Father at any moment at any time and ask him for anything and talk to him and commune with him and all that um and I do that I do that every day but there are certain just to keep me grounded in prayer to keep me consistent in prayer I do do the prayer watches and if you don't know what prayer watching is I'm not about to go into it. I will link uh, the website. There's so many websites that talk about the prayer watches and you can Google prayer watches and there's websites that will come up, but I'll link the one that I like. And there's also um, videos that teach about it. But basically where it comes from is if you look at like 
for me like I'm really into history looking into the historic background of the Bible looking into the cultural background of the Bible because it's it helps you like really be able to interpret scripture in its true context but um, in the Jewish culture they had times of prayer we know that Daniel prayed like three times a day um, let me go to Acts 3 and 1 my Bible may already be there it is um, so in Acts 3 and 1, it says, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. Um, and then I'm going to read you guys my study notes that um, are in this Bible. It says, the Jews observed three times of prayer, morning, which is the third hour, which is about 9 a.m. Um, then there's the afternoon prayer time, which is the ninth hour, and that's 3 p.m. and then the evening which is the sunset um, it says at these times devout Jews and Gentiles who believed in God would pause to pray the temple and local synagogues around the country would hold prayer services for those who could stop by Peter and John were going to the temple for afternoon prayer service because they were in Jerusalem so and there's other um, there's other verses in the Bible where they talk about watching or praying at you know certain times that all comes from the jewish cultural background that they did pray during those times of the day that's what the rabbis taught the jews and and so that's pretty much where the prayer watch times came from is from that cultural background of the the jews being taught to pray during those hours of the day and then also like this bible stated that they observe those prayer times <laughs> um with that being said like my notebook i have like tabs at the top that have those prayer times like from 9 a.m to 12 p.m and then it has the things that i pray for during those time frames there is like um a 12 a.m prayer watch time that I would pray because I usually stay up till like midnight but like I said you can go to God and pray to God at any time which I do I pray all the time and I talk to God all the time but there are the prayer times that I pray when I am just wanting to be intentional and grounded in prayer and with my intercessory prayer and just covering me my family my husband my house hold you know all that stuff with prayer and just saturate <laughs> our lives in prayer i do pray during those watch times and i was able to see the fruit of it um when i would pray at midnight i remember um when we first moved into this neighborhood this whole street that we live on like it was new uh this is you know it was a new community and I remember downloading the neighborhood app maybe that same week after we moved in. Um, and then after a couple weeks, there were like neighbors complaining about things that were happening in the neighborhood. And I was like, not on my watch. <laughs> so every night at midnight, I would literally sat, just pray over this neighborhood, pray over this subdivision, pray over this community, pray over this city. And I was just like really committed to doing that at midnight because that's when the most demonic activity starts to happen at midnight. Um, and just from me doing that, I was able to see the fruit of that, which was we stopped having crime. <laughs> like I no longer got those alerts that no longer got those alerts that people's cars were being break, uh, broken into or just packages were being stolen like that all just stopped i was able to see the fruit of that wanted to just like touch on that so as you guys can see i did order this new living translation life application study bible it has been on my wish list for so long i got this from christianbooks.com and i did have them personalize it by putting my first and middle name on it the reason why i wanted this bible of course i told you guys that i really wanted to focus on application like i want to 
not only just read the word, study the word, but be able to find opportunities to apply what I'm reading in my life. So I was really desiring and felt like this this particular study Bible will be very helpful in being able to do that. So I did order it and like I was saying, my everyday Bible um, that I love so much is starting to fall apart. I think this is going to be the Bible that, well not I think, I know that this is going to be the Bible that I have open every day adding my sticky notes to it. I don't know if I'm going to highlight in it and write in it because the pages are thin. I want to do some research as far as what would be the best type of highlighters for these thin pages to where it doesn't bleed through. Um, and then writing notes like what pens will work best on that. If you guys have this Bible and you guys um, have any suggestions on what type of pens or highlighters to use in this Bible, please share that with me below in the comments. But other than that, I'll probably just, I don't know if I, I may just like add my sticky notes in here or I have my notebook. Um, I have my notebook that I actually journal like what I'm reading, what I'm studying and how to apply it. I may just utilize this more since I won't be actually physically writing in my Bible, possibly, I don't know. But I'm super excited. There's so many reviews on this Bible on YouTube. So I'm not gonna go into detail about this Bible, but when I tell you information, but it's very, very application based. And I really need that. There's profiles on the uh, biblical characters, which this Bible is just like so good. I feel like if I was to recommend any of my Bibles to anyone, it would definitely like for someone who is like new to Christianity and they're starting their journal their journey to reading the bible i would highly recommend the life application study bible because application is so important it's key like i was telling you guys earlier i feel like well i know that when we read the bible we study the bible the key is applying the word that's how transformation takes place you guys want to know what bible verse just like is like my favorite verse right now there are so many so during the week holy week so during holy week leading up to resurrection sunday i read the entire book of luke i was reading like three chapters a day and jesus was really big on obeying god's word like luke chapter 8 verse 21 um, it says, Jesus replied, my mother and my brother are those who hear God's word and obey it. Like hearing God's word, we hear it when we go to church. We listen to sermons on YouTube. Um, we listen to podcasts and they're talking about God's word. And it's just like this generation is a generation that's like full of knowledge. Like we're constantly feeding ourselves knowledge. But it's so important that we take that knowledge and actually apply it because it's worthless if we're not applying it. There's another verse that I was like, okay, this is like my life verse right now. Jesus says, so why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? Like that verse was like, it was just like stirred something in me. And I was just like, it really pushed me into Alexis, focus on application, focus on application, focus on applying the word of God in situations and in areas where you struggle, focus on applying God's word. I can sit here all night and talk about this. I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right here, but that is going to be a major focus is yes I love learning about God's word and learning from God's word the major focus is applying God's word there needs to be application for transformation there needs to be obedience 
like Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't obey what I say? And that is what the focus is gonna be. I wanna focus on is just being really intentional about really walking this thing out with application and obedience. And I will see you guys on the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like the video, please <laughs> like the video and make sure you subscribe. And I love you guys and I'll see you guys on the next video. Crucified.